Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, series of lecture on emotional intelligence. In this class, we are going to discuss uh, two important uh, concepts that are vital for in the context of cross-cultural adaptability, adapting to different cultures. How do we perceive emotions in different cultures, in our own cultures and how do we relate others in a specific cultures or a certain national cultures. We will also get to know how the perception and expression of emotions that varies from culture to culture. And we will also examine what are the implications both behavioral, managerial and organizational implications in terms of our personal as well as professional effectiveness. So, that is where we want to know how emotion varies, how the expression and experience of emotions varies from culture to culture and how does it help us in the process of human survival and success. So, to begin with uh, the lecture on emotional intelligence and culture, the implications for cross-cultural adaptability. So, let us begin with are there any cultural differences in emotions? Do we find any difference? differences in emotion when we say differences in emotions we talk about both you know perception identification regulation and management. In simple two terms, there are two important things here we are trying to analyze. One is perception and another is expression. Rather, I would call it as experience and or perception and expressions. So, uh, when we examine these four dimensions which directly pertains to the domain of understanding of emotional intelligence. As we all know that emotional intelligence is nothing but one's perception regulations and management of one's emotions in self and others. So, the, the central theme of the conceptualization perception and management of human emotions remains within the purview of perception, identification, regulation and management. So, let us see. So, these are some of the cultural differences in emotions what you call the antecedents. So, what are those cultural differences that exist in frequencies or antecedents and that bring about an emotions? Say for example, suppose there is death of a close one in a family or in friend's family or a friend uh, has been separated or a loved one has been separated from uh, uh, her family or his family. World news triggered sadness for Europeans and Americans more frequently than it did for Japanese. So, something that is creating more sad for one cultural groups is little lesser sad for another group say for examples between Europeans, Americans and uh, Japanese. So, this shows that how different cultural groups they experience the, the degree of the impact of emotional perception in their lifestyle. So, let us examine some other areas say for examples emotions are psychological phenomena that is based on our evolutionary processes. So, in many cultures they do not encourage expression of emotions while other cultures it is very vibrant. Say for examples like you will find Indians are very good at expressing their emotions. Emotions are very visible on their mouth if you look words you know it is a Pacific countries say like Japanese, Koreans and other country peoples you will find the emotional expressions are not so visible on their face and very complex. It is not easy to examine from their emotional expression 
uh, what kind of exactly emotions they are displaying. So, there is a considerable inversality in emotion and its appraisal and expression or experience of uh, uh, or regulations or re recognition of emotions in others. So, for examples like Americans are very good at in identifying you know one's uh, uh, anger, anxiety, tension. Americans are good at identifying emotions such as anger, anxiety, tension, while their counterpart Japanese are not so good So, therefore, uh, because see uh, Japanese they belong to a collectivistic society, collectivistic society which does not encourage you know collective emotions to be individually expressed while Americans are very individualistic, individualistic they, they, they always share democratic ethos you know. democratic expressions like you know individualism is much more emphasized here. They, they, their culture, their family, family lives, their socialization, their educations, they, they nurture individuality. So, individuals are encouraged to express. So, therefore, they are very good at in their expressions while Japanese or Thais or Koreans are not so who are called so called the Asian or East Asian, East or you can say South Asian including India. So, these emotional universal processes allow humans to adapt, respond and cope with problems in their social lives. So, that is why we, we often also seen in Indian scenario, in Indian society although India is a very multicultural country, cultural country, but still there are similarities and differences. However, across society we found that there is a unique patterns of behavior displayed by all Indians starting from east to west, north to south. So, here what happens in Indian society you know although it is collective in nature here authoritarian authoritarianism works well in organizational affairs or in functional aspects, but in UK US and Canada, we often see that there is democratic expressions, democratic principle works better, because this provides platform for individual individualism, individualism. So, here individual sacrifice you know emotional sacrifice is much more for emotional sacrifice or sacrifice for others without any expressions you know without any objection you can say. Say for examples like seniority is maintained. is maintained. So, therefore, you have to wait till the time your chance comes, but yeah even even this thing also has been now practiced in Japan you know senior citizens gets lots of priorities 
and opportunities till their retirement in government services. Even in India also seniority counts most. You look at the Indian uh, civil services, bureaucrats are promoted on the basis of their in their uh, seniorities and etcetera, etcetera. So, therefore, the expressions of emotions also has always a cultural bearing. So, it that is that is why when you talk about the experience expression and management of emotions. So, that is where we try to connect AI with culture they are interconnected because it is the culture that decides the base for its functions. So, what exactly a culture is let us examine the concept of culture. So, culture has been defined in various ways by various experts. So, it is the sum total of you one can understand culture is the sum total of one's thinking, feeling and acting. Some people say culture can be defined as the beliefs, values and behaviors, beliefs, values and behavior. Some people say it is a set of attitudes, attitude constellations. Some people say you know culture is the man made environment, it is nothing but man made environment. So, let us examine one by one, why people say it is the sum total of feeling, thinking and action, because it examines, it, it reflects how do we perceive, how do we express a particular kind of style of talking in a style of expression of your behaviors your gestures, postures, expressions everything determines a, a, a set of uh, culturally a rooted behavioral patterns. So, that is why we call it it is the sum total of our thinking, feeling and actions. So, why thinking, feeling and them? Because uh, you know so it, it is reflected in our inherited in our personality patterns like say for example, feeling some people easily get anger, easily gets angry, some people are very controlled, very normal and very submissive. Some people are very aggressive in their behavior, they act very fast, while others are very calm, composed. So, it, it depends on, it reflects, this kind of behavior reflects the call, the socialization process, the socialization process, which is embedded in one's culture. So, culture is nothing, our social customs, rituals, traditions, etcetera, etcetera, celebrations, you know, even social celebrations. Even our culture determines our religion is also part of our culture, our race, ethnicity, and another important is called what language. So, these are nothing but what we call the markers of markers of culture. So, let us examine one, one by one. Some people say culture can be divided into two halves. One is materialistic culture, materialistic another is called non materialistic. Right. So, the non materialistic is called 
societal say for our attitude beliefs values social norms it is it is this also examines the materialistic gains starting from money even furniture any tangible tangible anything that is tangible this is called the non tangible so the culture determines how we view the world around us then now let's examine so we are trying to emphasize trying to understand what is culture what is its nature its function then what are the functions of the culture so it determines our behavior it it, it determines our thought and actions it facilitates our interactions yeah. it conveys our intentions and motives culture also determines our views our views about the world So yesterday I was watching, you know, Times of uh, Indian news apps. So there was a columns that the head of the state administration unit was focusing on that. The Muslims, those who are staying in China, are following the extremism paths. The constructions of the mosque are followed in the tradition, the way it is built in Middle East or the extreme uh, extremism areas. So therefore, it has become a big one of the big headache for the Chinese administrations. Why the people, those who are staying in China as Chinese citizen, as Chinese citizen, why can't they follow the Chinese tradition of constructing their mosque? So that means the way their <coughs> temples have been built. So always Chinese construction follows certain architect. So the concern is that why they are not following that architect type in the construction of their mosque then they following what the extreme Muslim populations are following. So, so this indicates this indicates a cultural differentiation a cultural difference in the regulation of in the regulation of religion religion in the tradition of in the tradition of a particular national culture national culture when you talk about national culture a culture that regulates the behavior the mentality the intention of a particular nation. So, that is what we call the particular national culture. So, therefore, in a nutshell we, we can say that culture controls our behavior, culture controls our thoughts, culture controls our interactions. Some people say it is nothing, culture is nothing but socially transmitted, socially transmitted patterns of behavior from one generation to one generation to another. So, it is shared, it is otherwise called shared beliefs and values 
it is maintained by a group a large group we can say and it is monitored by a society or uphold by society. When we discuss we will get to know how it is happening. So, the culture is not a single entity it is not a single entity. It is multidimensional. So, therefore, culture is multidimensional. So, let us discuss what are the multidimensional facets of culture. Some people say it is the totality of shared language, knowledge, material objects and behavior. The knowledge, language, values, customs and material objects that are passed from person to person from one generation to the next in a human group or society is known as culture. So, if you, you once you reflect why culture is important, you just now um, uh, just now elaborated upon what are the various functions of culture. But however, tell me when you are ready actually it should be your, you would not make sense in that sentence. We are having this conversation in person not over the internet. You should not be able to see how I would have to type that sentence. What? Oh my God, no. So, th these are certain you know questions that pertains to the cultural gap, the cultural differences. Somebody is doing something, somebody is trying to maintain some privacy, what I am saying you should not enter into my zone. So, how much flexible you are, whether you are a flexible person or a rigid person that is also an indication of one's culture. So, the materialistic world always focuses on materialistic culture such as the physical the tangible what we call you can see, you can observe, you can interact like the member of a society to make or use or share anything. It can be raw material, technology, stuff, anything, any product. Non-materialistic culture are more complex and more important to you know uh, understand and uh, reflect upon because these are abstract are intangible human creations of society that influence people's behavior. When you ask why do uh, as, a, as a Hindu why do you hate other religion peoples, the answer is very simple I do not know because my parents do. So, that is why I do. So, that is how the complexity of human perception lies in our socialization process, our parenting, our education, our training all are what we call the custodian of one's culture. So, the most important in a non-materialistic culture is that how language influences our cultural behavior patterns in terms of expressing our beliefs, values, rules of behavior, family patterns and the whole political systems. Recently, we have witnessed what is happening in American elections. As we all know that America being the super power in the world, it is controlling all, of, all over. You know, all over it is getting Americanizations, modernization nothing but Americanization, westernization is nothing only Americanization. You will find it nowadays at uh, you can very little experience any sort of things in terms of westernization, in terms of Europeanization, but most of the things are happening in terms of Americanization. Say for if you move towards the developing countries like uh, you know Korea, Philippines, Thailand. Malaysia, Indonesia, everywhere Americanization is spreading all over. So, that is reflecting the supremacy of a particular culture spreading all across. So, that is why culture represents our world view. Recently, you know, uh, there are two very popular famous uh, presidential speech or quotation always being delivered by uh, the both of these parties. W one is for Democrats, another is for, you know, um, what we call. Uh, uh, what is that? Yes, yes, 
yeah, Republicans. So, the leader of the Republican party was the Donald Trump. So, the Donald Trump slogan was let us make America great again. So, that is that is the, they, they think about the, the highness of American cultures, but on the other side if you look at how Donald Trump has been you know downsizing the racial activities, the ethnicity, the, the questioning the uh, one's ethnicity, the multiculturalism, the immigration issues. So, uh, which is against the American culture because Americans happens to be the most multicultural entity on this earth next to one can say next to Canada. So, being the largest or the oldest democracy on the earth, so American believes in accommodating others, you know, multiculturalism. So, that is why, you know, um, Hillary Clinton her perspective was something different. So, so th th that is instead of hating on the grounds of basic human issues like race, ethnicity, you know, origin of your birth, uh, uh, relating to migration issues, survival issues, she more focused on that uh, we all are in one race, all human beings are one race. So, let us make America better, safer and greater. So, that was the slogan, we can do it together. That togetherness is nothing, togetherness is nothing, but it is creating a world of culture, a culture of one world, a culture of one world. We can achieve greatness if we move together. We can make America safer if we fight together. We can make America great if you can fight together, live together. So, that, show, that shows the, the multiculturalism aspects. So, that is where you know culture is playing very important role in terms of our survival, in terms of our success, etcetera, etcetera. So, culture there are certain cultural inversals that also we often practice, customs and practices that occur across all societies, how quickly we read cues out of those emotional situations. So, these are some of the components of culture, you know, like say for example, symbols, anything that meaningfully represents something else. How can you quickly easily look at if somebody is smiling? Yes, just a simple smile, this is called, you know, smile is a universal emotions. Everybody, you know, you go any culture, smile always creates a positive state. So, this is always interpreted as a kind of positive emotions. So, we will take a short break, when you come back, we will see what are the other areas of cultures that matters in our everyday interactions.